The light van sector has stayed pretty constant over the last few years in terms of what's available, but all of a sudden we're seeing a flurry of new launches, including this, the all new Renault Kangoo. But aesthetics aside, it's under the bonnet that the Renault Kangoo really separates itself out from the pack. Now this particular version is the 95 PS diesel engine and you can spec that up to 115 PS if you want a little more power. But you can also opt to spec the vehicle with a petrol engine, a 100 PS unit, which means that if you do want to go for either flavor of conventional fuels, you're covered. There is also an all electric version of the Renault Kangoo, the E-Tech, which offers a competitive range of 186 miles. Now that is actually a little bit more than some of the Stellantis light bands, so it's already providing a little bit of competition. I think what's really important to remember now is that the Renault Kangoo offers something that van operators really do value. It offers choice and variety, and both of those really are the spice of life. The range of vehicles available is relatively simple. There are two body lengths available called ML19, M standing for medium, despite this actually being the shorter of the two, and LL21. No prizes for guessing that the L identifies it as the long version, which can also be spec'd as a crew van. There's also two trim levels to choose from, although you do get some bonus features with the E-Tech. The Kangoo's start trim level has a decent level of equipment, including automatic headlights and wipers, 3.5 inch TFT driver information display, DAB radio with Bluetooth and USB connectivity, electric front windows, manual air conditioning, cruise control, heated and electrically adjustable door mirrors, and a height adjustable driver's seat. E-Tech starts, however, that adds heated seats, a heated windscreen, and automatic air conditioning. The step up to the Kangoo Advanced trim level adds an 8-inch touchscreen display with smartphone integration via Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It also adds an electric parking brake, reverse parking sensors, premium gear stick with chrome inserts, cloth upholstery with yellow accents, 16-inch flex wheels, body-coloured door rails, and a wide-view mirror. The Ford Transit Connect and the VW Caddy, they trade on being car-like vans, whereas the Stellantis light vans trade on being effectively scaled down versions of their medium van offering. So Renault have obviously seen the opportunity to improve the offering at the car-like level. And why not? I feel really safe and snuggled in here. I feel these seats are grabbing hold of me. There's a nice big sweeping dash, but everything else is within arm's reach. So you can tell that ergonomics were clearly top of the list when they were designing this new Kangoo. And you've got to say, you've got to give credit to a manufacturer that understands that some people, they want to be able to jump out of a car and into a van without having to adapt to new surroundings. I'm certainly one of them. The first thing I noticed was how high set the gear stick is. It looked odd, but actually frees up cabin space down in the footwell and is really comfortable to use. There are also physical buttons for climate controls, which I think a lot of vans are doing away with unnecessarily. Storage is also pretty generous with a wide open space in the dashboard and a pop open storage area right above the steering wheel. You've got decent sized door bins, a bit of overhead space and a little slot down below the gear lever to fill with your bits. This van's cabin has gone the way of other light vans in emphasizing the car-like comfort and tighter driving space. So here's the rule. Trim level makes a huge impact on which features and creature comforts you'll enjoy in here, while body length will dictate what you get at the business end. And speaking of, that's a good segue, right? I've said it before and I'll say it again, a van lives and dies on how good its load space is. So let's take a look at what the new Kangoo's load space offers. You can get in through the back, through the two back doors. You've got 60-40 split here. You've got two side sliding doors, which means that this is one of the most accessible light van load spaces on the entire market. You've got some ply lining, which is great, usually thrown in free. You've also got four tie downs down both sides, including one on each side that's actually up on the side of the load wall, meaning if you've got a higher load, you, you know, you're not gonna be scrabbling around trying to find a tie down to keep that all nice and secure. There's also some really nice touches. This one in particular is a fold down ladder rack. It's very cool. I mean, you don't have to use it for ladders, but you could use it for pipes. You could use it for doweling. It all just slides straight in and into a compartment over the driver's head. Very, very cool. So well done, Renault. So here are the key stats. You'll get a 1.8 meter long load in the back of the ML19 and a useful 2.2 meters in the LL21, with load volumes being 3.3 cubic meters and 4.2 cubic meters respectively. 
Payloads will vary depending on the engine, power unit and trim level in the vehicle you choose, but you can reckon on payloads between 802 kilograms and 987 kilograms for the standard fuel vans and a pretty competitive 615 kilograms for the all-electric E-Tech. These stats are exactly where they should be for a light van. And that's the point. This is a light van for the modern age and Renault has made sure it ticks all the right boxes in the places they truly count. So, how do we finish this one? Well, I think you'll agree that I've shown you every reason why I consider the Renault Kangoo to be a major step up for the Renault Kangoo. I'm joking, of course, it's a great small van that offers a lot to users, whether they choose to drive one of these vehicles or any of the others that it might be platform sharing with. The fact that it also offers a fuel type for every taste, petrol, diesel or electric is really the icing on the cake. This van does everything that a small van should do well, well. So what do you think?